And our word for today on this memorial of Saints John de, de, Bebrough, de Brebeuf and Isaac Jogues, priests and companions, martyrs both, on this Thursday, October the 19th, our word for today is consent. Consent, our word for today, our reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 3. Brothers and sisters, now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, though testified to by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. All have sinned and are deprived of the glory of God. They are justified freely by His grace through the redemption in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as an expiation through faith by His blood to prove His righteousness because of the forgiveness of sins previously committed through the forbearance of God, to prove His righteousness in the present time that He might be righteous and justify the one who has faith in Jesus. What occasion is there then for boasting? It's ruled out. On, on what principle? That of works? No, rather on the principle of faith. For we consider that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Does God belong to Jews only? Does He not belong to Gentiles too? Yes, also to Gentiles. For God is one and will justify the circumcised on the basis of faith and the uncircumcised through faith. Our responsorial psalm, Psalm 130, With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. My soul waits for the Lord. More than sentinels wait for the dawn. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the way and the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, Alleluia. Our Gospel in Luke chapter 11. The Lord said, Woe to you who build the memorials of the prophets whom your fathers killed. Consequently, you bear witness and give consent to the deeds of your ancestors, for they killed them, and you do the building. Therefore the wisdom of God said, I will send to them prophets and apostles. Some of them they will kill and persecute in order that this generation might be cha charged with the blood of all the prophets, shed since the foundation of the world, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who died between the altar and the temple building. Yes, I tell you, this generation will be charged with their blood. Woe to you, scholars of the law! You have taken away the key of knowledge. You yourselves did not enter, and you stopped those trying to enter. When Jesus left, the scribes and the Pharisees began to act with hostility toward him and to interrogate him about many things, for they were plotting to catch him at something he might say. And our word for today, consent. Consent, our word for today. Our Holy Father's thoughts regarding today's gospel reading. These he shared at Santa Marta on October the 19th, 2017. This taking away the ability to understand God, God's revelation, to understand the heart of God, to understand God's salvation, the key to knowledge, we can say that it represents a serious oversight. The gratuitousness of salvation is forgotten. The closeness of God is forgotten. And the mercy of God is forgotten. And those who forget the graciousness of salvation, the gift of salvation, the closeness of God, and the mercy of God have taken away the key to knowledge. This happens every day. The Pharisees, the doctors of the law, are not just figures of those times. Even today there are many. This is why it's necessary to pray for us shepherds. This is why it's necessary in his role as pontiff, he's speaking, and obviously for our bishops and priests as well. This is why it's necessary to pray for us shepherds, to pray, to pray so that we do not lose the key to knowledge and do not close the door to ourselves and to the people who want to enter. To pray so that we do not lose the key to knowledge and do not lose and do not close the door to ourselves and to the people who want to enter. Consent our word for today. 
so much going on in our world, so many um, judgments, so many divisions happening that pit us one against another, uh, as was so prevalent during the time of Jesus in the Jewish community and beyond the Jewish community, quite frankly. And that creates this idea that it's very difficult for us to go out and proclaim the gospel to everyone, knowing that we are all equal in the eyes of God and that his desire is for each person to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth, no matter what they're engaged in at the present moment, no matter what their thoughts, their ideas, their activities are right now, his desire is for them. His desire is that they would be with him in eternity. And what stands between them and this relationship that God wants for them is this free gift of faith and their consent toward that thing. The reception of that gift, which we see so clearly laid out in St. Paul's letter to the Romans today, chapter 3. Now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, though testified to by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Christ Jesus for all who believe. For all who believe, for there is no distinction. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. They are justified freely by His grace through the redemption in Christ Jesus, whom God set it forth as an expiation for our sins. As whom God set forth as an expiation for our sins. Are we worthy of this gift of faith? In our own nature, of course not. But as sons and daughters of God, as beloved, um, as beloved sons and daughters of God, of course we are. God the Father determined it. He weighed it. And he said, they are worth the sacrifice of my son. And the son waited and said, Father, they are worth my sacrifice. And he came and he died for us because he loves us that much. What does he gain from it? What is his personal gain from our salvation? Nothing. Nothing. It's in his nature to be generous. And so he just wants to share that with us. Nothing was added to God because Jesus died on the cross for us. He was already content within himself. He does not need our love. We need his love and we need the love that we have for him. It fulfills us. It brings us to the place that God created us to be with him in eternity forever, sharing in the divinity of himself, sharing in that dignity that only he holds. We have not earned it. We cannot earn it. It is not possible for us to earn this thing. I'll never forget in my beginning stages of walking with the Lord uh, and um, having times of great, deep, and personal intimacy with Him and really thinking that uh, that this relationship was coming together. Yeah, I was really cooperating with God and quite frankly, and those of you who know me know that this is true, I was thinking, boy, isn't God lucky to have me? He's finally figured this thing out, you know? Now we're going to move things forward. <laughs> and so here I am in this intimacy, in this very uh, uh, immature relationship with God, just getting started. And suddenly, one day, I, for no reason whatsoever that I can explain, completely lost my faith in God. Completely. Could not make myself believe that God even existed. And I was in an utter panic. Just could not understand how I could go from being so in love with God, having an understanding of who he was, again, first coming into uh, my my faith life within the, the first year of coming into relationship with him, and I completely experienced this darkness, this momentary darkness. It happened one evening. I cried and, and wandered through the night. Um, and panicked through the night and then just decided, well, you know what? God isn't real. I need to get on with the rest of my life. But I continued to cry out to God that night saying, God, if you're there, please show yourself. Please help me to understand again. Please return that thing that I had had. And early the next morning after being up all night, suddenly that rush of faith came back upon me and that gift of faith returned. And I heard the Lord whisper gently to me, it's a gift. You cannot earn it. Don't think by doing the things that you're doing, 
you are entering into salvation because of what you are doing. You have entered into this life of faith by a free gift of mine. Understand it. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't do things as a result of that faith. Of course, we show our faith by the works that we do. An authentic faith always has accompanying works. That is, that's the result of our faith. That's the proof of our faith. But that work does not grant us salvation. It only points to the fact that the faith, which is a free gift given to us by God, is actual and it, it is residing in our hearts and in our minds and in our lives. And we are willing to safeguard it by the way that we conduct ourselves because we can certainly give it away. It's always an invitation. We either get to accept it or reject it, not only once, but over and over and over again. I am saved. I am saved. I hope to be saved. That's, I am being saved. I am, I am saved. I am being saved. I hope to be saved. There you go. I am saved. I am being saved and I hope to be saved. That's the way that we look at this spiritual life. Yes, only by grace, but only through our cooperation as well. And then as we cooperate, as we give our consent over and over and over again, that relationship comes to full maturity. And we are invited forever to spend God, to spend our eternity with God in heaven as we cooperate with Him and consent to His invitation that we might enter into right relationship with Him. Consent, our word for today. Mm.